What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. In today's video, I shall be showing you the results that I got when benchmarking the 2023 Entry M2 Mac Mini. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers, so if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified when I upload any of my new videos. Without any further ado, let's hit the titles. The first benchmarking application which I ran on this Mac Mini was Geekbench 4, which was ran through Rosetta. As Geekbench 4 is no longer supported and thus there is no official Apple Silicon version. But nevertheless, it should allow us to provide good comparison between previous Mac generations. It still runs a number of different tests and algorithms and depending on how they've performed and how long it takes to perform them, it would then give a score accordingly. So with that being said, I got a single core score of 6,628 and a multi-core score of 27,390. I also performed Geekbench 4's graphic test using the GPU found on this M2 chip. It's worth noting that this Mac Mini has a 10 core GPU and not 8 like we've seen in the other M2 Macs. The first compute test I ran on this was the OpenGL test and got scores of 114,033. And when running the test through Metal, I got a score of 97,908. Once again, these tests were ran using Rosetta. The next testing application that I ran was once again from Geekbench, this time from their slightly newer set of tests found in Geekbench 5. And just like we saw with Geekbench 4, these tests are being run through Rosetta. So when testing the single core performance of this Mac Mini, I got a single core score of 1,445 and a multi-core score of 6,842. Once again, I tested the GPU found within the M2 and got an OpenGL score of 26,139. And when testing using Metal, I got a score of 29,496. And as you could probably guess, the next test that I ran was once again from Geekbench, this time their newest set of tests found in Geekbench 6. And this is set to run natively on Apple Silicon. So starting off with the CPU test, I got a single core score of 2,650, along with a multi-core score of 9,912. When running the Geekbench 6 compute test, I got an OpenCL score of 27,800 and a metal score of 45,777. So sticking to the trend of testing the CPU, I then ran Cinebench R23. Now Cinebench is a good benchmarking program as it tests each individual core and then all the cores together. It then gives scores similar to Geekbench based on the time taken to complete those tasks. As I mentioned, it runs these tests on both the single and the multi-core performance and then works out a ratio between the two. The higher the ratio, the better performing CPU. So for this test, I got a single core score of 1,660 and a multi-core score of 8,754, which indeed gives us a ratio of 5.27. I then ran NovaBench 2. Now NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests not only the CPU and GPU, but also the storage and the system memory. It's also worth noting that this test was once again ran through Rosetta. So for this test, I got a score of 1,897. The next test I ran was an SSD speed test and this was once again ran through Rosetta, but it's just testing the SSD so it shouldn't really make much if any of a difference in the results that we see. So after running this test multiple times, the fastest that I got was a write speed of 2,404 megabytes per second and a read speed of 1,471 megabytes per second. I then ran a network speed test to test out the Wi-Fi speeds of this Mac Mini and got a download speed of 570 megabits per second and an upload speed of 103 megabits per second. I then ran the V-Ray test and got a score of 5,705. 
The next benchmarking application which I ran on this Mac Mini was GFX Bench Metal, which is once again designed to test the performance of the 10 graphics cores found within the M2 chip. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests from both higher and lower levels of intensity, and in the interest of saving a bit of time, I have calculated the average across each category. But as always, I will show you each individual result. So the results that I got for the higher intensive graphics tasks was a frame rate of 212.68 frames per second, whereas for the lower, I got a higher score of 241 0.07 frames per second. So sticking to testing the GPU found within this M2 powered Mac Mini, I then decided to run the wildlife test, which comes from 3D Mark. Now when running this test, in fact, this M2 powered Mac Mini managed to max out this test bringing in an average of 60 frames per second which clearly shows that when it comes to running some of the more basic graphics tasks on this mac mini that it will be able to handle it perfectly fine so i therefore chose to run the wildlife stress test now with this test i got a higher score of 10,020 and a lower score of 9095 which is indeed a decrease in performance of around 9.6%. So with that being said, I then chose to run the Wildlife Extreme Test. Now this test is run at a slightly higher resolution at 1440p. Now when running this test, I got a score of 6,750 with an average frame rate of 40.4 frames per second. So after running the Wildlife Extreme Test, I then chose to run the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. And this will once again run the Wildlife Extreme Test, but over a consecutive 20 different times in one concessive loop. Now with this test, I got a higher score of 6,754 and a lower score of 6,731, which indeed means that the decrease in performance here was pretty much negligible at around 0.3%. I then used Blender to render out a number of different scenes using both the CPU and the GPU. And now starting off with the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 9 minutes and 41 seconds to render out this complete scene. Whereas when I used the GPU, believe it or not, it took 3 minutes and 33 seconds to complete. Which means you could pretty much render this scene using the GPU almost 3 times before it completed finishing it with the CPU once. And whilst rendering the BMW scene, it took 4 minutes and 16 seconds to complete the render using the CPU, and when using the GPU, it took 1 minute and 44 seconds to complete the render, which indeed makes it around 84% faster using the GPU over the CPU. In fact, pretty much across the board, when you look at the times taken to export all of these tests, this Mac Mini is faster than even the entry M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which is interesting as I can only imagine how fast the M3 is going to be in these up and coming devices. I then exported some video footage to H.264 at both Full HD and 4K using Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off. Now the time taken to export the Full HD project was 47 seconds, whereas it took a little longer to export the 4K project with it taking around 2 minutes and 54 seconds to complete this. There were some additional GPU tests that I ran which came from Unigen, the first of these being the Heaven benchmarking test. And when running this test at 2560 by 1440, I got a score of 1213 and an average FPS of 48.2 frames per second. And when lowering the resolution to 1440 by 900, I got a score of 3030 along with an average frames per second of 120.3 frames per second. And the final test which I ran from Unigen benchmarking tools was their Valley test. And running it once again at 2560 by 1440, I got a score of 2314 with an average frame rate of 55.3 frames per second. And when lowering the resolution down to 1440 by 900, I got a score of 4,786 with an average FPS of 114.4 frames per second. I then ran the Shadow of a Tomb Raider benchmark, which is of course native to macOS, and I ran it at a number of different resolutions. The first of these is 5K. 
which let's be real this mac mini was going to struggle with anyway but i thought hell why not it'll be good to compare it down the line so when i set the resolution to 5120 by 2880 it managed to render 2262 frames with an average frame rate of seven yes seven frames per second Lowering it down to 4K, so 3860 by 2160, it rendered 2,333 frames with an average frame rate of 12 frames per second, which is still quite bad, let's be real. And lowering it down to a more respectable full HD resolution, that's 1920 by 1080, it managed to render 5,640 frames with an average frame rate of 36 frames per second. And finally, lowering it down to a standard 720p HD, so that's 1280 by 720, it rendered 9,131 frames with an average frame rate of 59 frames per second. So it doesn't really matter what resolution you run a lot of these games at, especially at least Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it won't really be able to average anywhere near 60 frames per second. And the final tests which I ran on this Mac Mini were from Antutu. So when running the Antutu HTML test, I got a score of 74,638. And the final test which I ran was the Speedometer 2.0 web test. And when running this test, I got a score of 441. So that has been it for today's video. It is interesting to see the kind of power and performance that we are getting from such a small machine. Honestly, I think that's quite impressive. I know over the years it's going to get smaller and it is going to undoubtedly get more capable. So it's quite impressive to see how the Mac mini is performing as the years go on, especially with this Apple Silicon transition pretty much being completed now. So years down the line, when we're looking at M5 all the way up to M10 and whatever Apple then choose to do it'll be interesting to see how the mac mini performs when compared to its predecessors of course when the m3 max come in i will be uploading and comparing all of those machines to every other model so be sure to subscribe as i'm sure you don't want to be missing out on that plus you'll also be one of the first 5,000 members to go ahead and do so if you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section. Or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. But once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.